Hi everyone! My name is Sheila and this is my Aerial Terrier Raja. And a couple of weeks ago someone had suggested doing a video on flat work. So this is my video contribution to the Aerial Terrier world. I hope this video will help you in your journey as a trimmer. And uh, happy trimming! Here are the tools I tend to pull out when I'm doing flat work. Uh, I like to use a regular stone. It looks like this. Um, this particular one, I got it from uh, Lithuania. Um, I had someone, um, he was actually a stone master and he actually sent it to me. Um, I've got quite a few of these stones, but you can get similar ones from um, Ashley Craig and um, online if you wish. I also have a cheap option. This is a cuticle stone that you can use. Um, you can buy it from Sally's or you can get it from Amazon. I will put the link down below in the description box. I also like my skipper stripper in the tiny one, the smallest one. And I tend to use both the curved end and the straight end for the job. And also my Mars M320 knife, which I like also. Um, you notice that the teeth are very, very fine and it's really, really close together. So this is really good for flat work areas. To make your life a lot easier, you can use um, ear powder and you can sprinkle it on the flat work areas and you can help you can help make your pulling a lot easier because it gives you a lot better grip. Another option is to use, um, you know the snooker balls, they have chalk powder like this. You can get it online. I got this from uh, Amazon, I think. And I kind of break it into sections and um, it comes in, big, in a big block like that. And you can break it into smaller chunks like this size and then I just use a small little bit like that I rub it on the flat work right here and it helps with the pulling here are some friendly tips as you're about to start thanks for the kisses Raja good boy <laughs> so here are some friendly tips on how to make your life a lot easier when you're trimming flat work make sure that your dog's coat is dirty yes that's what I said Leave it dirty. Don't wash it and it'll make your life easier because there's dirt and there's oils that it can help with your grip and you pull a lot easier when you have a dirty coat to work with. So don't wash your dog prior to you stripping your dog. Use rubber cuts on your fingers to protect your fingers from getting any blisters. <laughs> so I want to make sure that I have some layers growing on here. So this area is my transition area. I'm going to be very conscientious and careful about how much I leave on this area. But over this side where the flat work is, I can be pretty liberal and just go kind of crazy and just pull as much as I can. So down to the shoulders. Flat work is basically divided into two areas. Front flat work which is anywhere toward the front of the body and I'll show you in a little bit what I mean and there's rear flat work which is flat work that's in the rear of the dog so rear flat work would entail the areas between the cowlicks here and here you see the cowlick right here and here so anywhere in here is considered rear flat work and you would work all of this area around the anus around the back around the back of the tail on the bottom and all around here to the band of stifle in the front so where the, where the leg bends so all of this is considered rear flat work and front flat work is from the corner of the eye toward the ear all of this is flat work down toward the corner of the mouth all of this is flat work, so right in between his cheeks. Right behind the ear, there is another line right here. And it's like a giant cowlick that goes this way. And the hair grows all funny 
all different directions. So all of this stuff toward the front of that cowlick is considered flat work. Now there's a very thin uh, transition area here. I'd say about an inch to an inch and a half. This section between the neck and the crest to the front line where the cowlick is, is considered a transition area. I, I'm pretty um, careful when I strip this area because I want this to be very very short. The flat work should be very fine and then the crest has to be reasonably coated so you don't want this to be short like here. So his coat right now is very long. I am going to be grooming him. We just came back from a two week dog show. so. So he's a little bit overgrown and today I will be grooming him, um, focusing mostly on his flat work, his jacket, I will roll later on. So basically what we are doing today would be this area right here, just in the front of this neck cowlick right here. See all of this is very, very long. Flat work should basically be so fine that you can't pick up with your fingers. As long as you're able to pick the hair with your finger, like this, see, if, if you can grip the hair, it means it's already too long. So this is definitely long, so all of this is going to come off. And I'm going to pull it to maybe just leaving one or two layers on there, leaving it almost bald but not completely bald. Because uh, we are going to be entered in another show in about two weeks. Well, some people consider the shoulders, this area above the elbow to be also flat work, but I think that's subjective. I like this to be a transition area actually, because the jacket coat is going to be long and the flat work in the front of the chest is going to be super duper short. So in this area, it also depends on how your dog is built. So if your dog is built a little coarse, you might want to take this shoulder very very fine so that you minimize the, the, the coarse appearance of your dog in his shoulders but if you have a dog that's well built you can take this um, just medium and just accentuate his nice shoulder layback right here um, if you have too much coat right here it just makes the dog look a little too coarse so his coat right now is very long as you can see it's about an inch long right now and that's a little too long for my liking so I'm going to be rolling that but I'm not going to take it down to almost naked and obviously this area right here there's a valley if the dog is wet you'll be able to see it there's actually a dip that goes in toward the dog's elbow it curves in and then it curves out again so this area you have to be careful and it's a transition area that I like to leave a little bit of coat so that from the shoulder into the leg is basically one straight line and it looks basically I'm trying to create a nice straight line from the shoulder into the leg but if I take this off very short as short as the shoulder then I'm not gonna be able to create that straight line right here I'm gonna have a dip and that's actually not visually appealing to me so that's the side of the dog. So when we come to the front, Raja, wait. Wait, Raja. Good boy. So all of this is all front flat work. So from the throat right here, I would, I would take it down very, very, very tight. All of this here is very tight. All of this on the front of the throat is very tight. So all of this is still flat work right down to his four chest this is all very very tight very very tight all of this is tight and then once i come toward the front of the leg once again i'm going to be very careful i'm going to make sure that the dog is standing up when i trim this area because it's another transition area so the leg itself the hair is long but the four chest here is very short so i can't I can't take this as short as this because then I'm going to have a dip again. 
So from the side of the dog, when you look at the dog when he's standing up, this really should be a straight line from his chest, his forechest down, right down to his toe. So, so this should really be filled up right here. It should not have a dip and then create a, a convex inward because that's, that's not very visually appealing again. Oh, correct. So all of this I am going to take out. This is all flat work. Everything in the front between the two cowlicks on the neck. All of this is flat work. Front flat work. And all of this is going to be almost bald. I would start growing a little bit of hair right here for a transition area so that I have something to blend between the flat work into the leg. Okay? So now I am going... You can also trim your dog sitting up like this. Um, when it comes to flat work, uh, it's kind of tedious. Some people hate it. Some people are okay with it. I don't mind it, actually. Um, you can also train the dog to lay down if you want when you're doing flat work so that because the hair is growing in all these weird different angles and directions when the dog is laying down it's a lot easier for you because then you don't have to be standing on top of your head to trim the dog because always pull in direction of growth for the purpose of making it easier for me to film doing this video for you i have him laying down at the moment and i just wanted to show you how all the different hairs grow in all these weird directions can you see from from the neck from the back it's growing forward and down and then curving up here and then from the front of the throat it's actually growing backward toward this point so when you are trimming make sure that you always pull in the direction of the hair is growing it's just going to be more comfortable for the dog and he will be cooperative when you don't upset him by pulling it in the opposite direction so you can start right here behind the corner of the, the ear or you can start right here toward the front of the face. For me personally, I like starting over here and then working my way forward toward the dog. So I start on this side and then I trim on this side and then I work here and then I switch the dog around and do the other side. I'm going to try and film this so that the camera can see it. So when I first begin, I apply a little bit of chalk that I showed you earlier and then I use my skipper stripper or my um, cuticle stone or my Mars 320 and then I make sure that I pull the skin the opposite direction with my other hand very firmly and then just very lightly work the area that I'm trying to pull and work in a systematic way and make sure everything is pulled up so this is the amount of hair that's coming out right now if you can see you don't have to use that much strength just very lightly allowing the tool to do the work for you just like so And I can show you, I don't know if you're able to see the difference. So this is the area that I just pulled right here. So you see this, there's some layers growing underneath right there versus look at this, this is not touched yet. So the hair right here is a lot more thicker. You see, there's longer hairs that need to be pulled. So this is the area I just pulled and there's layers under there so it looks more refined versus this see the difference so now i'm just gonna pull a little bit more i think i could pull more layers out and i'm just switching different tools to let you see how this is done so very little hairs at a time you don't have to pull a huge chunk out each time when you pull just a little bit at a time I just wanted to bring the camera a little closer so you can actually see the difference. So this is the area that I just stripped right now and this is the area that has not yet been stripped. And you can see there's clearly more layers here that need to get pulled whereas here has just been pulled. See that? 
and how far you decide or if I want to pull more layers down or if you want to leave more it's really up to you and what you expect to do with the dog he's going to be entered in a show in two weeks so I plan to pull a little bit more out but not take it totally bald it's just a, a personal preference on how much hair you want to leave behind and uh, what your goals are so once I finish this section, I'm going to move to the next section and this is how you're going to do your flat work. Just work patches, small little sections and then move to the next small section and work in a systematic way that way. So now I'm just going to be pulling my next section and I'm going to pull it to roughly leaving about the same amount of layers as so this is the hair that i just pulled out as you can tell it's not that much so i'm going to be pulling this section the same as this so as i pull i'm not using that much strength and allowing my fingers to just seek out the long hairs so i can tell right now there's still a few long layers over here so this is what you do just pull a little at a time and see that's not much hair again being pulled out as you can tell and uh, I'm looking pretty happy right now so I'll just keep going see so this is basically what flat work is is taking the coat pretty pretty fine so I'm going to be moving on now to show you just for the sake of this video I'm going to be starting his cheek flat work and I normally start at the corner of the eye and I work my way backward toward the ear And once again, you're not really pulling too much hair off each time. You can use your cuticle stone or you can use your um, skipper stripper. And I'm just switching between my tools just to show you how it's done. To give you an example. I like to stretch the skin out right here with my other hand. So that... When the skin is taut, it's going to be a lot more comfortable for the dog. So I'm working in a systematic way. Starting on the front and then moving in a straight line backward. And then starting the next line down and then working backward again. If you find that your chalk is covering up too much and you can't see, you can always just use your ball brush and then just brush the chalk off and you can see what layers are left behind and what layers you need to pull. So I'm just going to take it a little bit more fine here because I like to take the sides of his head very, very, very fine. Because he has a beautiful head, I don't want to coarsen it up. Just working in a systematic way in straight sections like this. So now I'm working my way down. And you can always switch between your tools, you know, if you find that something's not working so well, just switch to something else that you find is working a lot better for yourself. Just experiment and try it out and see. The ear is in its whole section by itself, so I'm going to be trimming the ear separately later on. Um, this is another very important transition area between the top of his skull and his cheek flat work. So there's about an inch section here between my fingers right here. That's going to be very, very, um, I have to be very deliberate and careful because I don't want to create a dip in his eye right here so normally in this section 
I will trim him when he's sitting up or standing up so that I can actually see his face from the front profile. So that section I will do later on when he is standing up. For the time being, I am just going happy, doing trimming my flat work, taking it down as short as I can. Taking it as short as I can, not leaving too many layers on his face because um, the Aerial should really have a very refined brick head and so uh, when you have too much layers on here it makes it look very coarse so as you can tell I don't know if the camera can actually show the difference so this is the area that I just trimmed and this is areas that I've not trimmed see the difference I'm bringing the camera closer so you can see how much I took off and you notice the hair now is so fine you can actually barely even pick it with your finger and that's how it should be uh, it must be very very fine you can take it bald if you want to but I'm gonna leave a very fine layer here and this is stuff that I have not done can you see the difference so this is stuff that I just did and then this is stuff that needs to come off right here Whenever you are doing flat work, just be very systematic in your approach as you trim the dog. Don't jump around. Just trim here and then trim here and then trim here or something like that. Just work systematically. That way, you are very, very conscientious on the sections that you need to trim and the sections that have not, you know, have already been trimmed and you don't go all crazy. You just kind of work systematically on your dog so this is what I'm pulling off it's not much hair it's not that much hair off so I'm using my uh, cuticle stone from from uh, you can get it from Sally's or any uh, store like beauty supply store or um, place, uh, Amazon if you want so I'm just pulling off very 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 fine little hairs they're very very short I mean, in comparison to the rest of his body, but that's still, it's still long for me. So my line is probably from the corner of his eye down to like this. There's this little um, corner of his mouth, but I like to leave a little bit of hair in the front of this line. I like to leave a little bit of hair to help with my transition. And I wonder if the camera can actually see it. Um, yeah, so this area here I like to leave a little bit for transition and everything else here is the flat work I take it very very tight so once again just be systematic as you pull so you don't miss some spots and keep the skin as taut as you can just to make your life easier and make it more comfortable for the dog see the one downside to using the chalk is it kind of covers it up and then you can't actually see what you're pulling. But I find that after a while you kind of get a hang of, of it even with the chalk there. You're able to see what hairs you need to pull. So just keep working your flat work. I'm not balding him completely. I'm just taking it down to maybe just a few short layers on there um, I know some of my mentors and my other groomer friends take it down to almost bald but I like it just very very fine just like that and you can use this time to listen to audiobooks or music you will make your job seem to go by a lot faster and make your work seem easier see that's the reason why when I do front flat work like this I like to have the dog laying down because the hair all grows in all these weird directions it makes your life a lot easier if the dog's laying down and he's relaxed and he's not fussing or fighting or you know Raja is practically having his eyes closed he's almost falling asleep you see so when he's a lot more cooperative, it makes my life easier. So when it's front flat work, days like that, I let him just lay down and relax. Come 
Yeah. Yeah. Good puppy. Oh, what a good boy. Yes. Good boy. So just keep working systematically. Um, how much you leave behind, like I said, is really up to you. Because um, I'm getting him ready for another show in about two weeks. So I want this to be pretty tight. Because I will not be able to work on him for at least another couple more days. So all of this, I'm going to take as tight as I can. So I just work in a systematic approach. Do this front half, uh, this right side of him and then flip him over and I'll do the other left side. So basically it's just like that. Just working in a systematic approach little by little. Using chalk to help you grip the hair. See, right here. And then just keeping his skin as taut as, as possible. It's kind of weird because the throat is very loose. I mean the hair around this area is very loose. So it's a little bit more challenging to keep the skin taut but you can always just roll it. See like what I'm doing? I'm rolling the skin, see? So I'm just kind of rolling the skin and working the flat work. Just like so. And then once it reaches this area, right, you have to change direction again because the hair is going in four different directions so you can adjust where you, you stand, you can stand this way, you can stand this way, you can pull this way, or you can, you know, get the dog to stand up and you can kneel on the floor and trim it as well. So it's really up to you. But when it comes to just this area of flat work, I just let the dog lay down, it makes my life a lot easier. So I hope that helps. I just wanted to mention a little bit more about um, stripping flat work. When I'm doing flat work, I tend to be using the tip of my thumb and the edges of whatever tool I'm using versus the flat side of my thumb. So the corner of the thumb and the corner of all my different tools will help to get a, a better grip. So as I'm stripping, See, I'm, this is where I'm stripping right at the using my tip and then so, so this is what I'm doing and so I'm stripping just focusing my grip like literally on the corner of the thumb yeah racha yeah good boy so I'm transitioning now toward the layback of shoulder area when I'm stripping. So I'm, I've am i switched now to my larger stone. And once again, I'm using the tip of my thumb and the tip of the tool. And I'm holding the dog pretty firmly in his withers. So pull the skin taut. And then pulling it. Yes. So as I'm pulling, and I wonder if you can actually see. So this is where I'm pulling, using the edge. And then if I feel that area is still pretty thick with layers, and I want to refine it, I just go in and I pull more. Remember always to keep your wrist taut and actually use the elbow and your shoulder joint to give you momentum as you are stripping. So this area here now is getting stripped. Just follow the direction of the hair growth as you pull to maximize comfort for the dog and uh, when he's comfortable he remains compliant but when you start pulling the opposite direction he starts to struggle and fight a little bit it makes your life a lot harder so see this hair that i'm pulling 
and moving now forward and following the direction of growth this way so that's why I'm standing here in this position and relative to the dog because I'm pulling this area right now on his flat work so I think I'm gonna use a little bit of chalk and then same thing I'm using my other hand and also my entire arm to help roll the skin over his shoulder blade holding the withers with my palm and right here keeping the skin as taut as I can following direction of the growth and pulling as close as I can using the tip of my thumb and tip of the tool and being very deliberate and making sure that every pull is pulling some hairs, making every pull count. Huh, doggy? Yeah. Good boy, Raja. Good boy, Raja. And he's just chilling. See the hair that I'm pulling right now? So every now and then, use your ball brush. I feel like more actually could come off right here. So I'm just going to pull more. You could pull more. And how much to leave behind or when to stop, it really depends on your goals. If your dog is just a pet, you don't have to be so short um, you can just pull the top layers and be done with it but because i am rolling his coat for show i have to be a little bit more conscientious because the hair is getting too long and uh, the breed standard requires the flat work to be pretty tight to show off his muscling and make him look a bit more refined. Yes, if I'm using a very small tool, then I actually have to point it here. I feel like when it's a bigger tool, when I'm working toward the back on the top of the shoulders, for example, then I don't have to be using so much precision I can just pull more if that makes sense so when you're trimming the rear flat work it's the same thing as the front always pull in the direction of the growth so you see that's a cowlick right here when the hair grows into a little swirl and then the hair goes in direction that's growing upwards pointing toward this swirl, the cowlick and over here, the hair from the front of the second thigh is pointing back and then from the crotch and the groin, the hair is pointing upward this way so when you're pulling, just make sure you're pulling the direction of growth and when I do the rear flat work, I use this line as my ruler so everything in this, on this side of the cowlick gets pulled out this way. And then this area, you have to leave a little bit of coat. It's not as fine as the hair inside on this side. So I leave a little bit of layers over on this side of that line. And then on this side of the line, I pull out. Pretty tight. I like to use chalk. And... When I work the rear flat work, I tend to be more deliberate in my pulling. I only pull a few hairs at a time. Less, less, less hair compared to the front because this area, he tends to get very sensitive. So if I get a bit too greedy and I pull too much, he's going to disagree and he's going to start fussing and then it's going to make my life harder. So, I make it my goal, just pull a few hairs at a time, keep the skin taut. 
So I wonder if you can actually see the hair that I'm pulling is not much. Looking the rear flat work, you just have to be a little bit less greedy and go very slow and very deliberate, pulling just a few hairs at a time. I try to use my other hand to keep that skin as taut as I can. Pulling the skin using my wrist here. Pulling the hair as taut as I can. And all the way. So this whole area gets pulled. So you can also open up the groin like this and put, use your left hand, your left wrist. And pull that hair. Just very little at a time. See, he's starting to fuss now. Because I pulled a little too much. So when you have a tired dog, it's a lot easier to pull. So I recommend taking your dogs for a long walk first. And then just pulling using chalk. Applying a little bit of chalk and then keeping your... See, I'm using my left hand to keep the skin as taut as I can. Just like so. So just a little bit at a time. And then just slowly. So once I do this part, I work and move upward. Just like so. Just a couple of hairs at a time. Not too much, don't get too greedy. Just a little bit at a time. See, the funny thing about the real flat work is the hair also grows in all kinds of weird directions and you have to pull in the same direction to make life easier for yourself. That way the dog is not struggling. So this area here, anything that's pointing up toward this swirl, I'm going to pull pretty tight. And just pull as few hairs as you can. And you kind of get a hang of how much to pull depending on how your dog is responding. If he is fussing, pull less. If he's not, then pull a little bit more. And, and I think that when you have a dog that you've been stripping for a while, the hair tends to pull a lot easier. If you have just a pet and it's not being shown, you don't have to pull this area, you can always just shave it or clip it pretty close. So this hair, right here, I'm just going to pull along this cowlick right here, just neaten it up. See this area where the hairs mix, I tend to have to transition and blend it. So the parts that I want to have hair, I leave right here. And I just pull the long hairs, leaving some, taking some, and then allowing that area to just blend together. The thing about transition areas is pull some and you leave some. There we go, that's a lot, looking a lot better now. So when the hair is here and it's growing that way, I'll be standing on this side, pulling the hair this way. But since I'm right here at this point, I'm just gonna, it's scratchy. Gotcha, just lay down. Good boy. And then, just 
going the rear for you to see. My rear flat work is finished a lot faster than the front flat work because there's a lot less area, surface area to cover. Mm, see? Just like so. And then the hair that's above here, closer to the anus, you can just pull your tail up away from where you're trying to pull and you just follow the growth of the direction of the hair and just pull very, 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 very little. Just like so. Not much hairs at all. And then following the direction of growth right here and then just pulling yeah this area needs to be tight see this area right here needs to be tight oh. yeah you lay down lay down Raja good boy what a good boy inside inside here around here you have to take it very very tight and keep it neat because right now it's way way too hairy just remember take a couple of hairs at a time and not be too greedy and pull too much like this area right here there's a little too much hair so I'm just gonna take it a lot more fine. I'm just pulling at the very, very tip of my tool now. Using tip of my thumb. Right here. And the hairs are really, really, really fine. So, this is looking a lot better. Just refining it and just cleaning it up now. Yep. Yep, that's better. So this area has to be thinned out, obviously. But I want to focus on the anus area. Just pull a few hairs at a time. Just like so. When it comes to the scrotum, I know a lot of people like to shave it. But I personally just strip it. Because I find that when the hair grows back, when it's stripped, it's more f fine like this. It doesn't prick the skin and make it itchy. You know? So I find that stripping the scrotum is actually better for him. I just take very few hairs at a time. And I'm very, very careful. You can hold the skin pretty taut. Just a little bit. Mm, he's such a good boy. He's really agreeable. And he lets me do it slowly. And I'm using the tip of my tool now. So if you just strip a few hairs each time, you don't have to keep doing it. You just have to pull a few hairs each time you pull. Just like so. See? It looks so much better. No, I just strip the other side. Right here. It's looking better. It's 
So I just wanted to show you guys This is the area that I just did So this is the area that I have not stripped yet And this is the area that I just stripped So this is the rear flat work needs to be done um, I will be blending this out a little bit more Taking this a little tighter And then doing some transition work right here Because it's too long I'm just going to just transition here and take, thin this out a little bit So even with the scrotum, you see this side's been stripped And this side has not So it's just very lightly trimming the scrotum each time I can And then I'll be working on this side as well So I just blended this area I, I've thinned it out a little bit more now So that it's not such a jarring line between the rear flat work and his leg coat so now it's a little bit more thinned out so it looks a little bit better so now i'm going to be doing the same to the other side of the rear flat work and make it match so that's all for flat work and i'm just gonna keep trimming right now so we're Halfway down in the rear, halfway down here And I'll be working his other side, his left side of the front flat work And I hope this video has helped you Bye! Happy trimming!